In the year 2017, an innocent man accused of a crime has a choice. Hard time or prime time. Sensational. Perfect contestant. I want him. He must pay or play the soul of Detroit. On your mark! I'll be back. Go! The highest rated podcast in history. Guess they want us to stay. It's a game between life and death. You ass in a ride in the truck, it's gone. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You might be qualified, in Mel. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay, you want to go right now? You can do the honors. I can do the honors. You can always do the honors. What, what, do, what do we say? Hey, kids. Hey, folks. It's your old pal. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm anybody's pal. You're everybody's pal, Mark. I don't know about that. Well, hey, look. This is a soul of Detroit without the main man. He's out on the... Uh, He's out on the. Uh, he's, he's not really campaigning today, is he? It's election day. He's he's out there. He's um he's going from place to place. I've been trying to track him down because he's going to check in at some point today, but absolutely nothing from him. So, yeah, it's not ML Solo Detroit today. Today it's just the Solo Detroit. So he, uh, for once, he has nothing to say. By the way, great intro, man. Your intros are always thank they're you. Always fabulous. That was a the from the Running Man, right? The great Richard Dawson, if I'm not mistaken, the the longtime host of what the Family yeah. Feud. Yeah, yeah. What a creep. He, Who he played canceled great, today, wouldn't he? Yeah, it absolutely. <laughs> played a great. We well, did play a good bad guy in that movie. <laughs> I think that was part of the shock of that movie. This would be good for Elwick. We're we're referencing something from what 1980. Five. Well, that no. was kind of my idea. Yeah. No, it wasn't eighty five. When was that? Late eighties, maybe. No, Running Man was early on. Was it that early? Yeah. I miss those Arnold movies. They don't make. Do they make movies like that anymore? Those. Well, I mean, the idea that somebody's saving the world, we still make that movie, right? I, I mean, guess. I. They and are we. Gonna, I mean, the the royal we, not you and me. Yeah. I mean, maybe you. They are going to reboot the Running Man too, but I you know. Whatever. Give me Arnold, man. Give me. I was telling uh, Joe Zoos, talking to him before the show, like if he's ever seen it, because of course he has, and he's younger. Um, but that movie and Commando and Predator, <laughs> like three <laughs> of the most ridiculous, best action movies that have ever existed. I love them. What was what was the one he did where he came out of the movie screen into real life? Uh, uh, is that Last Action Hero? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. That one got panned hard, but it's not. This one's Is it? Not no, that it's kind bad. of a good bad movie too. But those those three, and then oh, of course Terminator. You can't forget Terminator. And I just I, I don't think we see all we see now. That holds Marvel. up, by the way. Terminator. Yeah. You think so? I do. The first one. I mean, you know, forget the special effects, whatever. Just the tension in it, the the sort of the apocalyptic uh, preview. Mm-hmm. I think I think that it's just a taught, well told story. I mean, the, the 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 next ones, the second one in particular, you know, a little more, I don't know, melodramatic and over the top and Isn't all that. The second but, one, the best one. Uh, I prefer the first one. Of course you do. I mean, come on, man. And That's, then they ruined it by with. The well, TV you probably show. like the second Aliens too. And by the way, we never get to talk like this. What's different about today? Uh, there's not someone pontificating about. <laughs> I don't know. We don't get to speak to... I feel, I feel like he's going to listen and get mad at us. We did start late today, um, and it, once again, it is his fault, because I don't know where he is. He said he's out on the road. He might zoom in. He might call in. He had a hell of a week. I talked to him yesterday. ML is uh, very relaxed and ready for today's election. Um, he's like, we did everything we could do. We're all set up. This is what's going to happen. But what a weekend for him, man. He had his birthday, and he had a big Michigan State win, which I want to pick your mind about in a little bit but uh first i want to mention that we are brought to you by the butchery the butchery sl.com dave hubbard his wife julie they're out there it's a small business they're working hard and it is a small town butchery you can get good cuts of meat and chicken and pork and most of it uh, locally you know local farms and they make sandwiches we never talk about how they make sandwiches and thanksgiving's coming up they'll get these really good local birds you can order them now so once again the butchery sl.com it's in sylvan lake 248-682-COWS. They're closed Monday and Tuesday, but give them a call. Check out the website. They're good people and better yet, good food. I mean, I can put up with bad people if they have good food, but it's uh, it's even better when it's good people you're buying the good you food. You can put up with just about anything if you have good food. And by the exactly. way, before we get to the 
what you were saying about your well, I know it's very painful with Michigan, Michigan State. Um, I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm fine with it. Okay. And before we get to why we're wearing, uh, why today we're both wearing Solo Detroit t-shirts when Mike's not here, before we get to that, which we should talk about in a second, I, I have a question for you, Mark. Sure. Because kind of getting back to the uh, the movie the movie theme for yeah. a second. We were talking about Terminator, the first and second. Here's my question for you, because I think you can uh, figure some something out about folks, depending on their answer here. Uh-oh. 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 I feel like I'm on the couch now. Okay. Alien or Aliens? Oh boy, um, God, I love them both. I it, like, it just to help I like refresh, three. <laughs> okay, just to help refresh folks. Alien was the the Ridley Scott sort of moody, arty, atmospheric sci fi movie that came out in the late seventies. Aliens was the James Cameron, who by the way made Terminator, right? Mm-hmm. The James Cameron sort of update, which was a lot more action oriented, also very fun. Uh, had a lot of memorable memorable lines from uh, Bill Paxton. Yeah. You know, yeah. Put her in charge, or what? That kind of stuff. That's that's actually a terrible paraphrasing. <laughs> but no, no. So so so, which one? Alien or I, aliens? I like aliens simply because there's more aliens. Does that make sense? There are more aliens. Yeah, okay. an alien. It's just the one that you never get to see. And aliens are all over the place. You know, right? back, back when newspapers used to send writers off to these writer conferences and, you know, try to learn to get better and all that sort of thing, and sometimes occasionally would have speakers come in, uh, authors, different uh, storytellers, or even teachers in some ways to, you know, talk about story structure and all that, and I don't want to bore our listeners too much with that, but we had a guy come in and break down aliens one time. This is in the early 2000s. Everybody in the newsroom piled into this, well, all the reporters did. To listen to this breakdown of this movie and the story structure and how it help might help us tell better stories for the free press. So that's I always think about that when I hear, when I think about aliens. Do you miss having? I think I might have asked you this before. Do you miss a newsroom? Because that oh, doesn't absolutely. Ex- doesn't exist anymore. Absolutely. Although for sports, you know, you're you used to go down to the newsroom to do expenses, or do travel expenses, or uh, or just say hi once in a while. So in sports, you you're not really part of the newsroom. Your newsroom is the press box, kind of. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's where you see everybody. In yeah, exactly, on. and that's been great. I mean, I've I've was thinking about this uh, when we get to this a little bit when we talk about Michigan, Michigan State, but just you know, so many people were there. That press box was packed, obviously, and and that was great. But I do miss a newsroom, Mark, for I, sure. I hate press boxes, by the way. You don't like them? Loathe them. Yeah, I do not. I don't ever really want to be in a press box again. It's just it's weird because you can't scream and yell and holler yeah, and I've, cheer. Well. I don't feel you get a good feel for the game anyway, but there is a lot of, um, I mean, if you're not in that fraternity, which you clearly are because you've been around for a long time. I'm not in any just, fraternity. Yeah, yeah, you are. People know, who, I don't know, it's just, there's there's these weird rules and then there's unwritten rules that it's like, this is not how I want to experience a game because that's this, this is not how fans experience a game. They don't at all. No, we're separated by, I mean, sometimes we're glassed in. A lot of times we're glassed in, especially yeah. if it's an outdoor stadium. Even in indoor stadiums, where was I recently where we were glass? Oh, SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles for the Rams, for the Stafford uh, Lions game a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, your moral, we were, your moral victory. The moral victory. Yeah, I got into the phrase <laughs> of what a moral victory is and how moral shouldn't even be part of it, People right? People were not happy with that. No, well, you can't make a moral judgment. I mean, it's like you're making a moral judgment. Okay, well, that's another thing. How do you write about the Lions right now? Because they suck. Does anybody want to read about the Lions? Actually, you know, I was shocked. Uh, my editor and I were talking about this yesterday. What's today? Tuesday, Mark? Yeah, but yesterday. I wrote a column off the debacle, Mark, Sunday afternoon. I saw that, yeah. What was it, 44 to Yeah, it was a joke. Just when you think that team seven could not get any worse, the six. Lions somehow amazingly got worse. Yeah, it gets the, the two, you know, they lost to a two-win Philadelphia team that has all sorts of its own issues. Got destroyed last week. Yeah, yeah 44, to, I know, it just was crazy. But I wrote a column, and it kind of focuses on Dan Campbell a little bit because I think people see how much he cares and see that the guys, the guys, the guys, the guys, that's awful, see that the players – up until that day, What's wrong with the guys? have generally played for him, right? Well, the guys, I'm not one of the guys, so you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. You and your word uh, hair splitting. Well, it's just. I know, uh, I know you mean. It's just the journalism part of it. But uh, How do you get people interested in the lines? We, everybody they, knows people this. read it, though. I mean, I was really? we were shocked, and I wonder if that's, I wonder if it's because they kind of bottomed out. Yeah. So now what, right? Now that they bottomed out, what do we do? What do we write about? Do people care? The fans <laughs> weren't there, right? They were. 
there were probably as many, maybe not, but there were a fair amount of Philly fans there in a stadium that was half full. Yeah, that was embarrassing. I mean, okay, who's it embarrassing for? The organization, but I, but then again, maybe you think they're, they're just, embarrassed. You no, think that is? You're right. Not anymore. Not anymore. And maybe another organization might be embarrassed about uh, how the fans react, but not anymore. Not here. It's been going on for decades. So no, and they and they feel it for sure. I mean, I'm sure they do, but you know, you make your money this the second the TV deal starts, right? You do. NFL teams just make their money, but it's just an embarrassing look. When the fans are so apathetic about the team. Campbell another, talked about that, actually. I think the next day. On, he did. What, on, did. What did he say? It, more or less that he understood it. That, that, that it was up to the lines to give him, give him something, give him a reason to come down and to be there. I mean, these, you know, you know how these fans are. You're one of them. I love the lines. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. and people show up. I mean, the fact that even it was half full for, what, an, a then 0-7 team. But here, here's another thing that sucks about it. They honored one of the best players in the organization's history at halftime, and nobody nobody saw it. Nobody was there. Nobody was there to see uh, Spielman and see Barry induct them because the team sucks so bad. Yeah, I know. It's 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 really sad. There, it was uh, also Halloween, so there were costumes. And But the, the best photo I saw out of that from the crowd was a guy with a bag over his head, yeah. right? Yeah, with a, with a sign that said, this is not a cost. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, do readers okay? This is another weird question. Do readers prefer um, you know the misery loves company? They they want to read when a good team does something bad or when a bad team does something good. That is a great question. That speaks to the uh, the the crux of human nature, right? That you're deep, oh, man. You went way you went, you're well, you deep. Just took it I can't believe how deep you're you're getting into here because we well okay. Let me rephrase. We it. battle this all the time. Not battle, but we we struggle wrestle with this. That's a better word. We wrestle with this all the time, Mark, in the newsroom. About when it comes to headlines, uh, topics. I mean, I'm talking about in the sports department. I can't speak for the rest of the paper. But what are what are people going to read? And when do we slap? Because some of our stuff is free, and some of it we put behind a paywall. So when do we slap the subscription on it? We, you know, if it's negative or it's bad or we're going to be critical, I mean, do people want to pay for that? You know, right? Yeah. And we can talk a little bit of that with Michigan, Michigan State when we get in. We get into that. But yeah, no, that's it's an interesting question. I. Here's what here's what I've found. I think there's a difference between the college and the pros, Mark. So when the Lions really start struggling, people tune out and check out a little bit. Yeah. When Michigan struggles, people get more their blood their blood worked up, right? They yeah. It boils. There's a nice sports cliche for you, or just a cliche, <laughs> a life cliche. Sure. And they uh, they want to hate read, or they want the coach gone, right? I mean, for Lions fans, what do you what you want Dan Campbell gone already? No, of course you don't. Brad Holmes, you haven't seen the general manager. You haven't seen what he's what he can do. So there's nowhere to go. Where can you turn if you're a Lions fan? You just accept that this is just another year in a sixty year long slog. I mean, nobody wants to read when you're apathetic about something. No, right? You either want to be pissed off or in love. Exactly. And for like when Michigan struggles, um, it it comes back to well, right now Jim Harbaugh or whatever, and mm. and people get worked up about it, and so they'll still they'll still read. I gotta tell you. I'd fire him today. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. I'm done with We know what he is. He's a known commodity. Seven man. and one, man. You really fire a seven and one coach? Yeah. Yeah. I think we just know that this is what it's going to be. Eight wins, nine wins every year. So are we going to talk about that now, or do you want to talk about the why uh, we're both in the shirts real quick? We will. Uh, my, well, you can mention that. Well, do, you, do, you, do we need to, you know, mention one of our be- well, beautiful sponsors? Sure. I can talk about the Kaju Cafe. Oh, there you go. They have a big thing coming up December 3rd and 4th, Laith Alsadi. He's going to be coming there. I, people have probably seen him on The Voice on NBC. Really, really good guitar player. He loves to play classic rock songs, too. Uh, he's, a, he's a Wolverine, as is John Rutherford, the proprietor of Kaju Cafe. But uh, check it out on their website. they got a lot of stuff going on down there. Just good good food. It's a great place. God, I, I could eat about 3,000 muscles right now. I'm that hungry. So the Kaju Cafe. What do you want to say about the shirts? I just thought it was interesting. We haven't both had these on at the same time in forever. And all of a sudden, Mike's not here, and we have him on today. And we didn't talk about it. We didn't plan it. Yeah. It's not like we were in middle school. We're not in a band. No, or in middle school saying, hey, what are you going to wear today? No, I know. Right. What What, what does it say to you? <laughs> what, wearing the shirts? Yeah, is it some kind of a subconscious uh I just, it was it was in front of me when I got dressed today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't really. And I went, oh, I guess this is more appropriate today than other days. So yeah, me too. He just he just texted me, so there has been some contacts with ML, but that's that's kind of. Oh, what do you say? And do you really want to know? Does it really? He says I can't stay for the whole show, which we already knew. 
Right. So is it better for me to dial in? Which does dial in in a text mean on the phone or does it mean on Zoom? Because that's also on your phone. Well, the old school just means the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Phone's probably easiest for him if he's on the move. We'll just we'll just see what he decides to do. So you, were you winning, you were in East Lansing on Saturday, right? I was, I was, and and one of the best uh, scenes, yeah, games. It was a great game. Yeah, it was an incredible game. Just the the atmosphere. Yeah, I, it's funny because I talked to people that have been going and covering that team, and I was at a tailgate actually a little bit with uh, Joe Rexroad, who used to cover mm-hmm. the. You know, he was a longtime Spartans beat writer for the Lansing St. Journal, and then he came to us at the Free Press for a few years, and just a great, great journalist. But he went to Michigan State. His wife went to Michigan State. I think that's where they met. And they they were at a tailgate with all of his college buddies. He just came up with his family to go to the game as a fan, which, you know, you don't get to do that very often, right? And um, he's a columnist in Tennessee now, and he had the Titans were in Indianapolis Sunday, so he came up to East Lansing and drove back early Sunday morning. But in any case, we... We hung out at the tailgate, and um, I, I, you know, all I did was eat, right? <laughs> sure. Have a little bit of water. I couldn't really, you know, do what everybody else was doing, either by smell or by, you know, yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying. Something in a can. How about that? But in any case, uh, I, I, I had not experienced that kind of. First of all, the environment. Yeah, yeah. COVID, right? Yeah. Secondly, oh, yeah. secondly, the Spartans, even before COVID, had not been very good the, the couple of years before. Previous years before, you had you had to go back five or six years to when D'Antonio was really rolling. Ooh, you're gonna get you're gonna get emails. No, seriously though. I mean, we were we were all talking about that. It was it was just it was overflow. I mean, this is how it was when D'Antonio had it rolling, right? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, there ain't no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm not talking about the team or anything. I'm just saying the atmosphere in Spartan Stadium. It was electric, and it hadn't been that like like that in four or five years. What um, and that was and that was awesome. And just even getting in there, man. So you write you write a column. You were telling me that you you know these columns that everybody wrote in the free press got really good responses. Yeah, they did. It was just it's it's a it was a perfect storm to use another cliche. So, so who has had what what's a bigger overreaction? Um, positive Spartan fans or Michigan fans that won Harbaugh fired? Like I just said five minutes ago. Oh, that is a great question. I still think. I don't think Spartan fans are delusional about what this, even after that I, I, game. I would agree with that from the Spartans I've talked yeah, to. No, I, I I, mean, I think they're worried that they might lose to Purdue Saturday, and they very well could. I'll bet that came too, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to go to West Lafayette. Nah, no, well, I, I'll go through Indianapolis, so, and I like Indy. That is, that is that's that is interesting. Yeah, they're they're not the overbearing Spartan fans that they that I expected them to be. That were the greatest ever. I mean, that's a it's a really good team. But it's not a great with, team. It's a really good team with a phenomenal running back. Yeah, and they've got they've got and, issues and, in various parts, and right? A really, really good coach. A great coach, and they got a lot. Obviously, there's some mental toughness about them. And speaking of the coach, I I'm going to do our our feedback early because we got um, some feedback and a specific question for you. Regarding Michigan, Michigan State, and this guy's talking about Mel Tucker. Benjamin wants to know um, if you can shed any light on rumors about Michigan State and last year, or before they hired Mel, remember they had the um, Luke Fickle, Cincinnati's head coach, and then that got blown up, if you had any inside information on that. But he just kind of wants to know your opinion overall. Uh, Would Mel Tucker go to LSU? Why would he go to LSU? And why would State have to go through this again? Well, that last one's more of an existential question. I cannot answer. Why would say I have to go through this again? I mean, all, a lot of schools at this level. I'm not even sure what this level is. I actually think that if well, t- why can't they find a D'Antonio type to stay for? Well, he they might be able to, and he might. I don't know if he's going to go. I mean, if he did go to LSU, it would strictly be because of the the talent pool, the access to the talent pool, and the recruiting, and you know, you want to get to that. Rather coach in the SEC. Well, yeah, that too. But, 100%. Uh, I mean, look, the, the Michigan State's really good. You're right. Kenneth Walker's great. They've got good receivers. I think that quarterback, Peyton Thorne, is going to play at the NFL at some yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, he's he's nowhere near as good as he's going to be. Uh, they they got a lot of nice pieces, and they've got some really good college players in the trenches. What they don't have right now, and if Tucker stays, maybe they will. D'Antonio built us up a little bit. Our, our first, second, third round picks on the offensive and defensive line, right? Mm-hmm. Especially on the edges on the defensive line. And that's what that's what you find at the top level of the SEC. That's what you find at Ohio State. And that's really the difference. I mean, Michigan State's 
got really good skill guys. They get good players in a lot of places, but they, you know, they they don't have those type of guys just yet. And and Mel Tucker be the first to tell you. And he also adds, as it relates to ML, if he loses, do you think he should sell his house? I know I would. Detroit doesn't deserve him, and I wouldn't pay another dime in taxes in the city if I were him. That said, I really hope he wins. He seems like a genuinely good dude, and shame on his district if they don't see that. Well, people vote for all myriad of reasons. That guy, he's not selling his house and moving. He likes no, he's where not. He is. He's not. One last thing on, on Mel likes, Tucker. If he, he stays where he is. He, he does, and, and, and obviously, yeah, we, we're hoping he's going to win, and if he doesn't, I'm sure. I'm hoping he just zooms in. Yeah, and if he doesn't, uh, he'll figure something else out. He always does. He's he's led a really, you know, interesting life, and he's never let any kind of setback stop him from going <laughs> on to the next thing, right? Sure. But real quickly about uh, uh, Mel Tucker, if he stays, what do you think? What what can he do there? Because he thinks, at least I know this is what he's told people out there, he thinks he can take Michigan State that final step that even D'Antonio couldn't, that he can recruit widely enough around the country. And well, players goal, are gonna, players are going to see how much they love playing for him, right? What they're building there. The goal now is is the playoff, and State has been there. So yeah, I mean, it, he could easily do that there. I just think it's a whole thing of is it easier to do it at a place like LSU? Maybe with recruiting. Oh, but, I, but and with more money, I mean, he'll get paid more. No, yeah, but I think State's got a couple of billionaires at this point, right? They can write sure. checks. Yeah. I didn't think about that aspect. Of yeah, it. they're building a whole new football facility up oh, there. Oh boy, that that's a good question for ML because that might bother him because he doesn't like all this outside money coming. No, in. but that's but that's how it works. You know, I don't know if he's going to stay or not. I just know that with what he's building, the, the the juice he has, the charisma he has, the the staff he's put together, the way you can see, you can see the chemistry, right, Mark? You can see well what he's building right now, and and they're not as talented. Frankly, I don't know that they're as overall as talented as Michigan. Well, that, hurts, that makes him even more pissed. Especially off. in this like, the that, line of scrimmage. Did you watch the game? A hundred. Yeah, of course I watched the game. I mean, I mean, did you or, or were you turning away in agony? I mean, it, it's hard oh. to watch a game like that when you're that tense. Uh, right? You know me better than that. So what did you see? You saw Michigan kind of control the line of scrimmage on both sides for for a lot of that game. Um, I did not think Michigan really controlled it inside. Uh, I thought they had a lot of problems with their defensive tackles, and they did too because that's why they got caught substituting three fucking times, which is beside me, and that's just another coaching problem. Michigan just made mistakes. They made way more mistakes, and that comes down to coaching. They did, but but State didn't have anybody like Aiden Hutchinson Right. No, or Jabo. No, Jabo was great. No, yeah. they were both. I mean, the, the way Daxon, they were collapsing. Da- the surprisingly, pocket. Daxon Hill kind of disappeared, but I thought the, the defensive backs and the linebackers played well. Um, but, you know, when, when it came down, and I, I hate the phrase making plays, but they made plays. That fourth and one pass was unreal. Oh, that was. And the fourth and five um, fade route. It was a nailer that caught it over, uh, oh, over Reed. Hill. Reed caught Reed. it over Hill. That it was, was an unbelievable the best pass. Best pass of the day. It was crazy. Yeah, it was amazing. Because so, he, because he, Thorne, he struggled a little bit early, but man, when he needed to, he did make the throws. I thought Cade McNamara, Michigan's quarterback, Mac, played great. McNamara, out, he was the best quarterback on the field. He was. I think. He was. Might have been outside of why. He's probably Michigan's best player on the day, him or Hutchinson. So, you no, know, those two. And then Andrell Anthony, the freshman receiver, had a great, he's from East Lansing. He had a great game. No, it was just. Now, am I, am I being that pass? pessimistic whiny michigan fan when i just look at this guy okay they're gonna lose at penn state they're gonna lose to ohio state i think so i mean i don't know here we are again probably or, ohio state but i i think they're not gonna beat penn state they might in happy valley they can sure they can sure go play with them we'll see what kind of mental toughness they have well that indiana's okay. an okay team we'll see what happens that's funny you said i don't think they're very mentally tough because i think it starts from the top and i don't think Harbaugh is very mentally tough. i think they have a little bit of a more this year there's a there's a better chemistry this team he he changed the way he did some things. He changed part of his staff. They got a little younger in the staff. Um, I just, you could. There, Starts at the top, though. It does. Even he has felt a little bit different. He's been back to his old self a little bit on the sideline. You could see it was noticeable. I, you know, I don't know how good they are ultimately yet, but uh, but they're, they were a mess a year ago, and they're much better this year. And I think they're a lot more connected this year, and that's really important after you lose a game like you did Saturday. And uh, we'll see. This this Saturday I'll tell you a little bit of something because Indiana's not good, but they're okay. Ugh, and it's at night. Why, yeah, right. We'll why? see how they respond, but don't give why, up why on a that, Penn hey, State yet. Do you know how how exactly are the the games picked? Do you know 
the order and everything as as how they do that no there's this formula and, and, it's, and you cannot figure it out online nobody no you can't open and and you only have to do a certain amount and then schools can say no we yeah. don't want to have it right so schools have a say tv has a say it's all yeah it kind of fluctuate not it not fluctuates but it, it i have it a feeling michigan changes wants, the season goes on far like michigan wants this game at night i don't know why against indiana well yeah they might they might i don't know it's going to be against a terrible team in November, I don't know if they're terrible. Indiana? And, and, well, they're they're not terrible. They're they're okay, but their quarterback's pretty good. In that first yeah, game. right. And they've got some other. They got really good linebackers. Not that our listeners care about. No, you're any, right. We're any, probably getting way too deep. Any of that? What I would say though is that Saturday it was great for this region. I mean, I know it was painful for mm-hmm. Michigan fans. Ultimately, it would have been obviously the state loss. But just when's the last time we had a sporting event like that with that kind? Where exceeded well, yeah. the hype with that kind of All our teams suck. I mean that that was one of the highest rated games the whole college football season, right? People and obviously that goes beyond our state lines, but one of the most gambled on too. Yeah, but it was just a thrilling, thrilling, enthralling, compelling game, and uh, we don't get that very often around here. And it was, I always find it interesting. Uh, you being columnist, what kind of shitty feedback did you get <laughs> from from uh, from fans? Not much. Nothing. Not much. I mean, I got I got a few. These fans will have long memories when it comes to what sports writers. Uh, yeah, and they do. Sports, no, they uh, do. I got a radio tweet. People say somebody tweeted at me about a column I wrote last year, right before the Michigan Michigan State game, when I said Harbaugh had taken the fun out of the rivalry because he had won three of the previous four, and the week before last year's game, I think remember there was a COVID shortened season; they only played yeah, once. Yeah, Michigan looked great beating Minnesota. Michigan State looked terrible losing to Rutgers. They lost three or four, and I thought, God, and you know, it was just. Even the Michigan State fans I knew and talked to last year, right before the game, they didn't want to watch it. They thought a, a beatdown was coming, right? Yeah. And it felt like a foregone conclusion. And then that was Tucker's, you know, Tucker just taking over the team and they pulled the upset. So I had people lording that over me today online. <laughs> what? But I would say, real quickly, the response over the weekend was, remember that. was fine. Well, I know. I don't know if they save them or it's the headline, but I just, uh, I feel like. Michigan State fans were were so happy. Their response was all good. I did get a few emails from Michigan fans that one may be harder on uh, on Harbaugh on Saturday. But here's what I would say to you, Mark. And I told this to a couple of colleagues. If you're a columnist up there at a game like that, and you get to watch, how often do you get to see and watch a game where there's playmaking on both sides through yeah, almost four a, quarters? It was a great game. It doesn't happen very often. So if you're going to rip and be critical off of something like that, they just don't like being alive. You know <laughs> what? You're just a douche. Uh, this just in: Sean Windsor wants to kill people. You you don't you uh, just you you're don't just react. you're just a misanthropic jerk. If you can't enjoy, and now I'm not saying don't hurt if your team loses. Of course, it's painful, right? But if you're going to sit yeah. there when a game is that well played on both sides, of course you're going mean, to. You don't care about mistakes. that if your team loses. I understand why people wouldn't care about that. No, but if you if you want to say you know start ripping and all this when you when your team played I great do. and lost by one you're one play away right I mean it just happens that's that's sports man it just happens that's like criticizing a quarterback but, but, for not completing every single pass no, it doesn't happen no but but the problem is is this keeps happening under Harbaugh there's that been, is the problem you're right there's, there's been plenty of almost could haves we're the almost context. there yeah. And it's and just it, why would why would we ever expect it to change? No, he's he's getting hurt right now by the by the history by the last four, three or four years. Well, he should because the first two years were um was re- were really good, especially the second year, and then it kind of fell off a little bit. But look, he's got a he's got a good team. You can't. I mean, you know these these guys weren't around then. This is a good team. I know, but why would we expect it to be any i mean has co- has a coach ever taken that i don't know they got a hard jump whatever this is whatever what that s- jump is within a team has that ever happened in year 7 well i yeah i do think they've taken a jump especially from last year can we just say this no, they're they, still going to be a you're not eight, gonna nine like, win team you're not going to like hearing this either but they got unlucky a, a little a, what we, in hockey you, you call a puck luck a bounce of the ball here or there right a, 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 review. A, a review that goes a different way. I mean, the sack, fumble, touchdown, whatever. Yeah, that goes their way. That could have changed the game. I but mean, I do, it, I do think a team makes their own luck a lot of times. Just sometimes, but sometimes you just get a bad break, and you do have to overcome those breaks. But oh, sometimes you can't. You hit the nail on the head. That's the thing. I don't think. I, I really think Harbaugh, and I'm sorry, making this so focused on him. I think he he 
his team lacks a killer instinct, which I think comes from him. He lacks a certain aggressiveness when they are up 30 to, to 14, right? I, I just feel like he went a little conservative, just like he went conservative when they got in field goal range. I think he lacks that. And I think when the team gets down and when there's any adverse, at, when, they're, when their backs are up against the wall, he just shuts down. I feel like the team shuts down too. And we've seen it since day one with him here. I'm just done. I'm just done with him. Are you really? Unless he beats Ohio. State. There you go. <laughs> or what about what about what about isn't that, how, he, isn't that how sports? What about works? if he beats Penn, Indiana, Penn State, and uh, who else do they have in there? Anybody? Uh, Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. Yep. Mm-hmm. They beat those three, lose to Ohio State in a competitive game, and they're Yawn. ten and two. Don't you think that's better than a year ago? And then go win the bowl game. Of course, it's better than a year ago. And go win the bowl game. You wouldn't be happy with that. I. You know what's funny? I could not give a shit about a bowl game. It really means nothing to me. If you're not in the playoff, why? What's the point of a bowl game? So it's all or nothing for you, eh? No, I just think I just think bowl games have lost. Um, they have to some degree. They're all just so the athletic directors, the coaches, sometimes presidents, uh, the head of the bowls can all get their little bonuses that are worked into their contract. I do really. Think it's a it's a scam. It's a total scam. It is. And that's why, you know, people it get is. mad like ML when players don't play in those bowl games because they're giving up on their team or whatever. It's like, no, I, I totally understand that. I, w- I wish coaches would play all their freshmen in those games. It's like spring training. But, dude, you still on January 1, if they get a January 1 bowl, or even if they're in a, a little bit of a lesser bowl, I don't know, the Chick-fil-A bowl. or the, I'll, uh, I'll watch it. I'll root for them, the but it doesn't mean Beef Carver's Bowl. Anything. The Beef O'Brady's Bowl? The is Beef still, O'Brady's Bowl. Is that still bowl. a thing? Yeah, it might be. The Weed Eater Bowl, is that still? Yeah, the Poolin Weed Eater Bowl. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That was silly. <laughs> I can't believe I actually remember that. That that just goes to show you how much that stuff works, right? The the, 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 the sponsorships, branding. and they stick in your head. And the you, famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get them out. But no, seriously, when <laughs> the bowl starts, anything. when the bowl starts, you're still interested. You're still rooting for them. Yeah, because you part- still want them to win. Yeah. You do. You you probably think you, you think you don't money care. On the game. Well, no, you think you don't care, and then a month goes by, and there's no college football or three weeks or whatever, and all of a sudden you're excited to see your guys play, so you do care. Damn it. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. Still waiting on ML. So while we're waiting for him, I want to tell you about Hall Financial. Did you know that they closed the majority of their loans in eight business days or fewer? Did you know that, Sean? I did not, but well, that's you should, awesome. You should probably give them a call and check out David Hall Mortgage. Call hallfirst.com. 866-CALL-HALL is the number. There's a local number, 2248-308. 5,000. They have over 4,000 five star reviews. Rates are really low right now. You never know when they're going to go up. Now is the time to get your house appraised. Check out refinancing, put some money back in your pocket. And if uh, you're going to go buy a home, making sure you understand your financial situation, that's the first thing you need to do. So before you go shopping for that house, call Hall first to get your financing in place. You can also go to mlsoladetroit.com. That's the website. And click on the little link right there to get started. And if you do talk to him, please tell him that this show sent you, ML Solo Detroit, NMLS number 1467435. The last thing I told Mr. Elric, candidate Michael Elric. Do you know that's what he's on the ballot as, Michael Elric? Really? He's actually yeah. using his name? Yeah. His mom would be pl- proud. Uh, <laughs> I'm still I still waiting for him to call You think him. she'll ever talk to me again? <laughs> yeah, because she's, she's an adult. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I think I think ML was a little bummed out that you apologized last week to uh, his mother and to everybody. I think he still wants to be in a fight with you. Does he? I think he just needs. No, that you fight. want us to be in a fight. Oh, I absolutely do. Yeah. So don't project onto Mike. I want to fight with everybody. Exactly. Well, you know, you just want it for ratings, man. You're like Mark That's Zuckerberg. The you're the Mark Zuckerberg of podcasts. You know, you're just going to spread uh, whatever. Look at his bank account. Look at mine. I think he's doing something right. Did you have you watched at him? What lately? cost? Have you watched Zuckerberg lately? Did you see his, I try big, not to. his big announcement? Uh, you know, they oh, for changed, the Meta. Yeah, they changed it to Meta from uh, from Facebook. No. In the announcement, he was like this, and for those uh, listening and not watching, he was very robotic with his hands in the way he talked. I don't know. He, no, he, I think it was unnerving for people. By the way, what I, is that though? Why I don't can't know. He just be a normal person. Here, here's something that'll make you happy. I'm still getting his avatar looked more real than he did. Oh, I know, no, for sure. And I'm trying not to make any judgment on that. I, the, I'll judge him. But what the company's done is, is yeah, it's feeding people certain kind of stuff just to work, stoke fear and anger and all that kind of thing. That's because it's uh, it gets back to your point about us, right? Yeah. We, you know what sells more, right? Well, that that you know people it he's monetized anger, is what he's done. Yeah, 
And uh, you know, at, at what paper, cost? Doesn't the paper want to do that? No, we try. I'm, we try not to do that. You know, we struggle with that sometimes. Really? Yeah, we do. You don't think to have uh, negative thought-provoking columns would be good? Mm, the paper. The editors don't think that way. I really? think there's sometimes there are writers that feel like that's how they might get noticed. They're hot take artists. You know? Sure. Right. But that isn't that what people read? Mm, some, but that's not all people read. I think it's easier to do that. It's much harder to, to 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 build an audience and connect with readers when you're when you're not just angry, right? But you can people do it. Hmm. You know, I don't know. I mean, you and Drew, I, you're I down here every day. Is Drew angry every day? Uh, about certain things. Yeah, but sure. but he's not angry for f- how long you do the podcast? Three, four uh, hours? Yeah, about. Is he angry for three, four no. hours every day? Of course not. No. Of course not. But that's because we talk about a billion things. You do, but he's got a he's but his his general deep down persona is amiable. Yeah. yeah. Right? He's sort of an everyman kind of observant guy, and sometimes he gets a little riled up about this or that, but but that would get exhausting. Nah. If you were angry all the time. You like it because you look at your bank account. I wish I could get more angry. Well, if it makes you any I'm not happy. an alarmist, I'm just, I just don't get worried about. No, that, that's you know. not who you are. But you like you like sitting on the sideline. And oh, I watch it. a fight all day long. That's what you love, right? Oh yeah, I'm a rubbernecker. <laughs> if it makes you I feel won't, better, I won't if, if it makes you feel better, I have gotten some texts from people wanting to know if Mike and I made up. So and out. Well, that kind of goes without saying. <laughs> Oh man, the geeks have inherited the earth. Did I do that? What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek? Or we're turning into cool guys? Did you bring a geek of the week today? No, because I thought you would, because you, you secretly love that kind of thing. I brought two. Okay. You want one? No, you go ahead. You want, you, I'll give I'll you. Co- I'll, I'll offer some, <laughs> some boring commentary on it. I'll give you a geek of the week. Me. No, stop it. That's why that's why ML doesn't want you doing it. Anymore. I know. I know. Um No, I, I'm gonna do equal time here because since we're on this Michigan, Michigan State vibe. And I'll start with the one that is uh, least worse to me, and that's the Michigan State fans and this whole Cedar Village rioting. If you want to go burn your couch, I don't I don't have a problem with that, but can we not can we just knock off the car flipping and the the breaking of other people's property? I just it's first off, it's played out. It's been there, it's done that, but number two, it's just stupid. It's incredibly stupid, and I don't even like the fact that you can just go out and burn your couch somewhere. That I mean, that could cause issues. Right? Uh, well, yeah, one guy got lit. I don't know if you saw the guy. That you got want to burn it on your own property, and you have a ranch or whatever. That's fine. But these these are people taking them out of apartment complexes and burning them on public pro- property, the street or the uh, sidewalk or whatever. I just I just think it's a little played out. But uh, you just so didn't you, everybody know that was going to happen too. I don't yeah. know. I'm just kind of, it's kind of a shtick. And I'm no, kind of they're feeding their own, you know, expectation. And right? the, one, the one that to me is way worse to be this, goobers. This is the, the Michigan side of it is I'm hearing all the John Vaughn stuff. John Vaughn, who was is a survivor of Dr. Robert Anderson. And I think people have seen him on the news and he's currently in like day number 25 of camping out in front of president Mark Schlissel's house in Ann Arbor. And all he wants is a conversation. And it just appalls me. That Mark Schlissel, that president of this university, and I know it's about money and it's about not, you know, admitting to anything to any of the victims and survivors of Dr. Anderson, because God forbid, should it cost the university more money and that's his job. But at some point, can you just be a, a goddamn human being and go out and listen to him? Didn't they acknowledge that though? And then they issue a statement. I remember talking to a John sta- Vaughn a statement. when he was at a, uh, a statement. He was on state. They were, they, this is several months ago. It was warm. I don't know. It was back in the summer. And, and John Vaughn was there and some others. It was across the street from Michigan Stadium and there was press all over the place. When yeah. Wrote stories. Yeah. And that was Michigan like a- talked in. Let me ask you something. Do you, what do you think about hanging out in front of somebody's home? Um, I'm not a terribly big fan of it, but that home is at a public university on the middle of campus it is uh, yeah on i don't know if it's on land. the middle but yeah it, it's right on the diet. i actually drove it's by right on the diet i drove by there the other day to go pick up my wife and um who was at a bill was working at lorch actually. i thought you'd be with me on this i think it's absurd that he won't go out there and just he don't admit no, to anything just listen no to i guy. i mean i am to, i i understand it for sure but what's he gonna what's he gonna accomplish what do you mean what's he gonna accomplish the, the Schlissel? Yeah. I uh, mean, from his perspective. Doing, maybe doing the right his, thing by listening to the, listening to John Vaughn? But they've already listened to him. 
I mean, what well, does he? What does John? Gotta, what does I, John I Vaughn though, want? Well, that's the thing. He just wants him to listen and hear him and hear what he has to say. I just think it's pathetic, and I think it's pathetic. None of the regions have done it. He he mentioned that students have stopped by and offered him support. Um, I saw that. Regular people have stopped by to offer him support, but of course, nobody in any administration position has done that. And I I get I get I guess their argument as to why they don't want to, but I I just think it's pathetic. At some point, uh, by the way, not their money, but at some point, just talk to the guy, just listen to him. You don't think there are other avenues to to talk to folks and and that sort of thing? I mean, because there are hundreds and hundreds of victims of Dr. Sure. Anderson. But this is where this is where we are right now with him, and it, and it's bigger. It's growing, and there's more tents, and there's more stuff. Going it is on. no, and they're in a tough spot. You're right because all the people that that were responsible for that are yeah. gone. And he, and the president's leaving. I know he's going to have a position, a weird overpaid position with the. Oh, university. he is, and I'm no huge fan of his, by the way. No, at all. I just think he's really messing this up. I mean, I understand your point about going out and but. But then what? What if it's not covered? It doesn't have to be covered. Right? Does jump but does do that's, they that's do they stop the point, if he comes though. out and says hi and they shake hands and they have a conversation? Does it I don't know. What 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 have you got to lose? What's your goal though, right? And there's already a lawsuit. Being normal, being a human. Is it no, but is is but is that the point? Yeah. He's he's not gonna feel better uh, until if, he talks I, to Schlissel. If you're running if you're running a university and you don't have an ounce of empathy. To, to see no i agree with that to, you're right I, I don't know i don't know how you can do that and and run a university where you're responsible for all these people and their money and then see a guy outside every day and not even re- respond to him i just think it's i think it's weak i think it's weak well here's the guy that's not weak it's not just weak it's it's not very smart hello are you there ml <laughs> hello are you there ml you know he answered the phone in the meantime did here. you just call him or was he calling? i called him read that oh i just dropped. oh it. you dropped it between <laughs> the... hang on here you what do we got here that's okay what am i reading you're telling us about uh what to luke do and wacky reading. yes and i'll uh, try to reconnect with them though. did you know that i can't read wait what i mean i can barely write oh shut up i thought right. maybe because you're old and your eyes suck well those are both true i had a friend of mine making fun of me for for not being able to see the other day all right. So what are we talking about? Luke Nowacki here? Tell Is, me about Luke. Luke, we're, all right. Oh, you know Luke. You love Luke. Don't you? I do. Okay, come on. You're man. supposed to read it so I can connect. You're, dis- you're, get, you're distracted, though. You're not helping me with the, the intro chatter here. That's okay, Mark. I see how it is. It's only if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Overreaction is not the strategy for the long-term investor. Neither is burying your head in the sand and hoping it all turns out for the best. That's something, uh, you know, maybe I did when I was younger and I try not to do it anymore, thanks to folks like Luke. Call my friend Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748 for some rational financial advice. What does this mean now and six months from now? Oh, wait a second. Are we still in the pandemic? Yeah, we are still in the pandemic. What does it mean, Mark? I don't know if you know what it means. I mean, what, do you want advice on stocks or bonds? All of it. Do you mean your? Do you move your four hundred one k, your college savings plan? Is your company in the right investments? Is your pension fund meeting its projected return? That's a critically important question for folks like you, Mark, that are almost at retirement age, right? So get advice. I wish. Yeah, you do wish. Get advice. Get a strategy. Call Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth at two four eight six six three four seven. For it. Because he'll make it all about you, sweetheart. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates Inc. Member FINRA SIPC. Royal Alliance Associates Inc. is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates Inc. So candidate Michael Elrig is not answering his phone now, so I'm sure he's talking to uh, a voter. And uh, I gotta say, I'm not terribly surprised he didn't answer his phone, so that's what happens. We're moving on without him. <laughs> So this is uh, ML's baby, his room 7609, where I guess he takes us deep inside New Wave hits. He loves New Wave. Um, I, do you, lo- you love New Wave too, don't you? Just say sure. I do. I love it. 
I'm still. A I actually warm- do like it. Do you? I, d- I love a lot of new wave. Yeah, he just. Does, you love everything. He just, you know, the B sides are fine. I mean, he he plays the B sides to be hip, but not because they feel sound good to the ears. It took me a long time to find a song that uh, fits a lot of different themes, and I finally landed on one. It's uh, by a band called Arcadia. More on that in a bit. And uh, this is their song, I guess appropriately titled for today in our in our missing host ML. This is Arcadia's Election Day. Do you know Arcadia? Do you know anything about Arcadia? It sounded like Duran Duran on Quaaludes. You know what? It sounded like Duran Duran because that is a Duran Duran uh, offshoot. It's Simon LeBond, Nick Rhodes, and Roger Taylor. And uh, I guess during the, um, they had a break 
in Duran Duran's schedule, and they decided, oh, let's just do our own band, which I don't know why you wouldn't just save the songs next time you do Duran Duran. Yeah, it's funny you call it New Wave. I just call it Bad 80s Music. <laughs> <laughs> but Election Day, for this guy, who I'm sure has heard of Arcadia. Yes, I, I've heard of them and, and love them very much. It, it's the uh, almost as good as Duran Duran. Do you know that song, Election Day? I sure do. In fact, I think I may have suggested that we play it during the primary, but it was too obvious. And because uh, I would have hated to uh, to bump the opportunity to hear more talking heads. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Good one. That's, yeah, that that is a good one. So where were you earlier? Were we trying to contact you? Not listening to good music, obviously. I'm actually at uh, at the uh, at the nerve center at um, campaign headquarters here, which would be my kitchen. <laughs> but you've been out and about, right? Oh, yeah. At 7 a.m., I was at East English Village Preparatory Academy, which was built on the site of the old Finney High School. And then we went to, um, oh, then where did we go? Then we went to um, uh, Bethany Lutheran Church. Then we went to St. Matthew's, where I had an interesting encounter with my opponent's uh, sister, who Ooh, was uh, what happened? very, very animated and... Uh, uh, one might say if they were unkind, but but completely accurate, unhinged. But, uh, what, but ooh, by the, what happened? Just a lot of stuff about you know, uh, you know, you're just the news. All you did was took out Kilpatrick. You're just oh, you know, all you is is the news. You never been here. You never did anything. And I said, well, I did this. I did that. So as a coach, she's like, a coach. That's not. That's just for kids. That's not for the city. I said, well, I kind of think they're both and. And um, and then there was a school commission. Oh yeah, at that private school. I said, yeah, at that private school where Letitia's son went to. <laughs> and she's like, uh, Letitia doesn't have a son. She's got a daughter. I said, well, she's got a son because uh, that's where I met her. And then it kind of devolved, and Wait, it was pretty. This pretty, is her. Uh, this is her sister. Her sister doesn't know she has a nephew. Uh, this is someone who later identified herself as her sister, and then. Then wouldn't let me say anything, and it was pretty. It was pretty interesting. Um, if you think uh, um, not fun encounters with with people who are uh, obnoxious are uh, fun, <laughs> but then Letitia came out and kind of. I don't know what she said to her, but after that she was much better. Oh. I mean, it was like it was like Mo Larry Cheese, you know, and and then um, speaking of which, what happened to Mo Cheese? But anyway, so. Um, so then she was cool, and by the time I left, everything was great. She's saying, like, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't even care who wins. Whoever, whoever wins, what? you know, we're going to be better off than we were with the last guy. Oh, that's true. And I said, and I said well, I, I do kind of care who wins. But, but no, by the end, it was, it was great. You know, people are coming up, and I would say, uh, you... I would say, I would say she, would like to, she would like to give you some literature, and then I would like to give you some literature, so I'm steering voters toward her. And, uh, and then there was one time when she was doing a little bit of her thing and I said, well, I'm the problem solver. She's the troublemaker. You know, here's the literature. <laughs> did uh, you, uh, did you ask her to vote for you by the end of it? Cause that's what you're supposed to do. Ask for her vote. Ask for the vote. Um, in that case, I really felt like, uh, it was, um, uh, kind of spoke for itself. What? I think you could have flipped her. Well, the other thing is, I'm not really sure she even lives in the district. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't want to ask the question, but uh, yeah, it was quite, it was quite an, uh, it was quite a uh, interesting encounter. But I will tell you, by the time I left, it was smiles all around, and I think it's even possible that we're going to be exchanging um, uh, handmade cards on on Good Friend Day. Now, can you um, can you pick a fight with Sean? Because that's the fight I want to see again. I want more fighting. Yes, I, I I have to uh, admonish Sean because <coughs> our um, the uh, the free the press made me do it. The unscheduled <laughs> and uh, spontaneous uh, love fest uh, killed our numbers. So Sean, even though I don't really feel this way, um, you disgust me. <laughs> um, is that I, is that true, Mark? I I hate. I hope you slip around in your own blood, which will be spilled when I sever your head with a, a homemade broad axe. I think there's just better promotion uh, when you guys fight. Wait a second, you, Mark. Did the numbers... I don't know, just, you know what's great? I can just pot them down. He can, he'll just keep you don't talking. know anything about cooking. See, he, uh, did the numbers... Oh, that is, that's awesome. Let's just keep talking. Did the numbers what? slip? 
Do we know that for I, You sure? know what? ML looks at him. I don't really ever look at him. Is that really true, Mike? You want to pot him back up? He's up. Now he's now he's now he's giving us the silent treatment. Uh, he did tell me that they were down, but I, I think it's you know it's all about promoting the argument. Uh, they were they were not quite as far down as the Unity episode of uh, of some months ago. But um, when was that? The, oh, the last time you were off. Uh, I do find it amazing that you have missed more shows than anybody else on the show. I guess that's true. I hadn't thought about it, but that is true. Mark, uh, the Unity, was that with uh, Onita? Uh, I was not no. here that day. No, the Onita show did very well. Okay. But but I have a theory about that as well. I'm sure you do, hmm. but maybe don't share it. What's uh, So the numbers were really considerably down because of the uh, lack of tension or just a little down? Hello. Is he on a delay? Sean. Yes, yes. I, I for the, for the sake of for the sake of our ratings, I have to express with heartfelt sincerity how much I detest you <laughs> and everything you stand for. Wait, is this on a repeat? Is this hello? <laughs> you, hello. Well, he, he's still in campaign mode. No, you got to beat the story we're, in. We were talking about Zuckerberg being a robot. What's going on here? Your very presence offends me. And uh, oh, the numbers—they're going up. They're going up. They're going up. Watch them rise. Well, uh, good. Just, like, just like the popping fresh dough boy to whom you bear an un- a remarkable resemblance. <laughs> there you go. There's the fighting words. There you go. No, that's that's all good. I do. I'm I'm uh, fat and <laughs> pathetic for sure. Yeah, uh, we we look forward to your spinoff, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Podcast. Mm, that's nice. I like that. Well, so I'll, nice, we'll, nice to see. Good luck to you out there, my my good buddy. <laughs> yeah, it sounds. No, um, we, th- our show did very well. In fact, our show has been doing very well um, uh, this fall and late summer. Uh, but it does seem that there are a lot of people who only go to see Siegfried and Roy on the off chance that the great tiger Monocor. may take a yeah, bite out of some German of head. You know, that's funny, Emma. We were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier about. Um, you know, negative. You know, negative sells. Negative campaigning works. Um, and we were talking about it with Sean's columns and, and writing and going negative. And that it does people people like that. Misery loves company, and people like watching fights. I once heard on on ninety seven one after the Lions lost. I think the Spartans and the uh, Wolverines had both won, and people were calling in, or some people said, you know, why don't you talk more about the Spartans and the Wolverines? They're doing very well. And and Doug Karsh said, um, "Well, uh, frankly, because the Lions didn't, and when uh, when the Lions lose, well, when teams win, there's nothing to fix. When teams lose, though, you know the whole roof is caving in and everything is terrible. Before we let you well, go, before we let you that, go, that, that really shouldn't surprise us because no, not at all. Because every every good news." newspaper publication doesn't survive and we never see a front page story that says unemployment low um uh the earth's atmosphere is is cooling but in a good way and uh and there is uh, uh, no deficit and plentiful of everything for everybody yeah. people see that and they say yeah i'm not interested in that yeah if it bleeds it leads real quickly before you go tell us about your uh now? This is it. Yes, you are. Yeah, because we're about done. But this you is, were late. I've been dismissed. You were no, late no, no. But, but real quickly before you go, and I hesitate to ask because Lord knows it would turn into a two-hour podcast. But <laughs> what was your what What was it Saturday like for you? That uh, we were talking about the game earlier. Forget who won and lost. I mean, obviously more fun for you that State won. But did you get the sense that we did that? I mean, that's as good a game as you 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 probably been out in ten years, and the atmosphere was just ridiculous. Uh, so I wasn't there. Um, I I sold my tickets because um, because uh, I had to campaign. But when I hit the campaign trail, I knocked on a door, and the people who answered were having a birthday party for a 64 year old woman named Renee, and it just happened to be my birthday. So I went in. I had a couple of drinks with them, and happy birthday. Shared some some last night. Uh, no gift. Um, and uh, and there was a fierce debate about whether or not Matthew Stafford sucked and whether or not Isaiah Thomas was a better leader no. than Matthew Stafford. And, and only the Matthew Stafford guy disagreed. Um, <laughs> and, 
And yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I went out and knocked on some more doors. And the last guy I knocked on, you know, I knock until dark. And when people give me the look like, you are not on my porch, then I move on. The last guy I talked to said, I'm going to vote for you, not only because uh, I, I like what you've done uh, in your reporting career, but because you stayed here, you came in and you talked to me. And when Letitia was here, all she did was say, hey, uh, can you vote for me? And I'd like to put a sign in your lawn. And then she left. Wow. <laughs> so I said, okay. And then I had another funny experience Sunday night. Oh, I'm sure it was how, hilarious. How many homes did you go into? And three hours later, like, okay, well, I'll vote for you. Can you just leave? No, no. Usually I'm like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, right. People, people, uh, my my home visits are more popular than, uh, than uh, yeah, the to a episode of the uh, Solid Trip podcast. But I was I was knocking on <laughs> doors what? on. Uh, what did he say? The, he was ragging your podcast. The, what, this one? The Unity. No, the other one. No, oh. the, the Unity episode. Oh, the, the, the other one's actually growing. By the way, I, it's funny I ask about Michigan, Michigan State, and this is, of course, it's about oh, him, that, him ca- about campaigning and going in and so on and so forth. But, Mark, do you have any Do you have any final thoughts? So we, we, we both want to wish you good luck, right, Mike? I mean, seriously. Well, I'll tell you, i got to yeah. say this good story. This is a good story. So yeah. oh. I'm knocking doors on uh, Nottingham near Casino. Tough neighborhood. It's, it's dark out. It's like 7.30, 8 o'clock. I knock on a, do- a guy's door. He's watching a football game. He sends, like, some bull mastiff to the door that's raising all holy hell. He can't hear me, so I just slide my stuff through the door, and I walk down the street. I'm halfway down the block, past all these abandoned houses, and I hear this voice called, ML, ML. And so I walk back towards the guy. He comes out, and he says, ML, what the hell are you doing in this neighborhood at this hour? I said, I am running for city council. He said, I am a Kilpatrick guy. I'm strong for Kilpatrick. But you being here on my street like this, after dark, you got my vote. I said, That's cool. That's awesome. I said, I, said, I appreciate that. And he said, uh, uh, do you want me and my dog to walk you back to your car? And I said, no. I said, I'm good. He's like, no, seriously, you're not good. We'll walk you back to the car. I said, Dude, I'm more afraid of your dog than anybody in this neighborhood. <laughs> so there was another guy taking his trash out, and he said, Hey, it's the old newsman. My guy with the dog said it. And I said, Former newsman. I'm not that old. And that guy said, You're out here tonight? You got my vote. I said, All right. Wow. So, well, that's so good. Yeah. I mean, in, all, in all seriousness, you have hit the streets hard. And you do want this, not just because it's a vanity project or anything. It's because you actually want to fix fucking city council for your district. Yeah, so it's cold as hell out there now, but the part I'm going to miss about this the most is knocking on people's doors and talking to them and spending some time in parts of the city that most people never go to. That is fantastic. And today, it may end, or it may just enter a new phase. There was uh, there was one piece of feedback. I'll, re- I'll read it to you. I'll let you respond. I, mean, I already crumpled up the paper. Let me uncrumple it here. Um if ML loses, do you think he should sell his house? I know I would. Detroit doesn't deserve him, and I wouldn't pay another dime in taxes to the city if I were him. That said, I really hope he wins. He seems like a genuinely good guy, and shame on his district if they don't see that. Do you have any plans on selling your house if you lose? Oh, my goodness. No, but I will tell you, there is a little newspaper up in Indian River that I've been curious about, but I would never leave my home. The reason we're in the trouble we're in is because so many people got mad and left Detroit. So I, I'm not going to do that. But uh, but I may apply my trade somewhere else. I don't know that I could go back into the media. But uh, but we'll see what happens. I think, I think I will have a job lined up by this time tomorrow. But, uh, but we'll see. What, you mean uh, being a city councilman? City councilman yeah. elect. Oh. <sighs> All right. Well, on that note, like Good. I said, if you're watching the returns at home and I'm leading in the in the in person voting, it's over. So I think we're gonna do very well with the absentees. Good. Ooh, right on right on cue. Hit the yeah. vote. Well now it's not nice. That's good to hear. Thanks for joining us, my man. Good luck to you today. <laughs> I should appreciate it. For the sake of for the sake of uh our business aspect, could you please run the show? Could this be the button Benjamin Button show where you run the show in reverse? Because obviously you saved the best. Well, I mean, you could have been on time, but that's a whole different thing. I don't know why we would ever we we would expect you to be on time. 
It's just a good time to mention that people can donate to the show by going to ML Souls Detroit it and, and clicking the donate button. You Beautiful. just did. Thank it. you. Because that was the only thing we had left to do. So you can take us out if you want to take us out. Well, you know, there are lots of sponsorship opportunities for the show, by the way. It's really cheap to sponsor our show, and you can be a part of our show. It's a lot of fun. We may even bring you on the air to talk about all your great stuff, because if you're a part of our show, obviously, it is great stuff. And uh, before... You'll have, before new cust- you'll have new customers, too, because look how often we use the butchery and go to the Cadju and use Luke oh, yeah. and Hall, so... Yes, uh, we are good partners to our partners. I like to think so. so. So I look forward to returning next week in studio to talk about some tales from the trail that I couldn't talk about before, including a woman who responded to my heartfelt Who I Am biographical post who said, uh, that picture of you and the baseball team you coach looks like it's been Photoshopped, and why do all the pictures of you with black people look generic? Uh, this, is, this is how nasty this has gotten. That That's people ridiculous. have convinced themselves that, uh, I mean, this is... This is the left is as deluded as the right often, and it's very sure. sad. But, uh, but that's okay. Blessed are the truth tellers, for they shall they shall uh, eat take the us tootsie out? roll. Oh, I thought, oh. I thought it was they shall take us out. Yeah, show. Do you I was want to eat this tootsie roll first? But take us out, my man. Cyrus, if you would be so kind, <laughs> take out Mark, take out Sean, <laughs> leave me standing, and then. I guess collectively you could take it out. Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> ML Elric is the running man. He's playing for a prize. The prize is his life. How about the life? The soul of Detroit. 